As we've learned, density is a ratio of mass to volume, and it can be given by this formula. The purpose of this lesson is to see how we can solve various kinds of problems using the density formula. So we can begin by rewriting the density formula in terms of symbols. So we have density equals mass over volume, which can be written as uh, our symbol for mass is G, our symbol for volume is a capital V, and our symbol for density is D. So the entire formula can be condensed into this form, D equals G over V. Units again, D is density in grams per milliliter. G stands for the mass, measured in grams most commonly and V is the volume most often used in milliliters. Like I said, usually, most often. Doesn't always have to be, but what does matter is that we are consistent with our units. For example, if density is measured in grams per milliliter, the mass that we use must be in grams, not kilograms or pounds, and the volume must be in milliliters. We have to have matching units. So, if a problem gives for example, density in grams per milliliter and volume in gallons, for example. Uh, you would need to convert gallons into milliliters before proceeding, as we learned how to do in the last chapter. So, let's say that you were asked a question like this. Oops, I've gotten a little bit off the screen. There we go. Uh, so the question like this, find the volume of 25.0 grams of zinc if the density is 7.1 grams per milliliter. Notice that the thing that it's asking you for is volume, but our formula is for density. So we can't use the formula in its current form. We need to rearrange it. We need to rearrange the formula to get the desired value. This time we're looking uh, again to see what we're looking to find. Find the volume of blah, blah, blah. So we need to find the volume. So V is what we're looking for. So we must rearrange the formula so that the thing that we're looking for, the V, is two things. One, it's alone. Notice it's not alone right now. It's on the same side of the equation with the G. And secondly, we cannot have it in the denominator. Right now it is in the denominator. That's a problem. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use our algebra skills that we learned in our math class. So how does that work? We want to multiply or divide any of the variables that we want as long as we do it to both sides to produce the result of getting our answer alone not in the denominator. So this time the variable is in the denominator so the trick that you can use is the first step is to multiply both sides by it. So what does that look like? Well we have a v in the denominator so we're going to multiply by a v to cancel that out but in order to do that we must also multiply the other side of the equation by V, causing this side to cancel out, and the formula reduces to V times D equals G. So now that is our formula. It's out of the denominator, v, G is, or V is, rather, and, uh, but it's not alone yet. The V that we're looking for is not alone. It's being multiplied by D. So, uh, we must do the opposite operation to get the V by itself. Right now it's times D. What's the opposite, opposite operation of times D? Well, of course, it's divide by D. So we want to divide by D on the left, but also do it on the right, because that's how it works. So we divide out the D on the left. We divide out the D on the right. The D's on the left cancel, and we're left. The formula reduces to V equals G divided by D, which looks like that. So that is our formula. That's the formula that we need to, uh, we want to use to answer their question. So we've rearranged it. So what it says is to find the volume, we must divide the mass by the volume, or I'm sorry, by the density. That's what that says. So returning to the original problem that we uh, were asked to solve, how do we do this? Here's the problem, as we said earlier, find the volume of 25 grams of zinc if its density is 7.1 grams per milliliter. 25 grams, we're given, that's our G. 7.1 grams per milliliter, that's our density. So we're going to plug those things into the 
uh, appropriate place. We're going to take g divided by d, but we have units. So you remember our dimensional analysis charts? That's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with a big dimensional analysis chart, and we're going to put the things that we want to uh, divide by on the bottom and put the other things on the top. And so the g goes on the top, 25.0 grams, just like that. The 7.1 grams per milliliter goes in the bottom, but there's that slash in the bottom. We do not want slashes in the bottom. Remember that the line itself, the horizontal line, is our slash. So we want to not write g slash ml on the bottom, but rather g on the bottom. Our slash is the line, and ml is going to go on the top, and it's going to look like that. That's dividing by 7.1 grams per milliliter. And you can see then that grams is on top and bottom. It's represented by a G on the bottom, but it's still grams on both sides. And so we can cancel that out. And we're left with 25.0 divided by 7.1 is that number of milliliters. However, we have only two sig figs in the 7.1, so we must round that to two sig figs, and there's our answer, 3.5 milliliters. So now you can try it yourself. What if a problem uh, was asking you to find the mass? So you'd need to isolate the formula to get the g by itself. What would that look like? Starting with this formula that we memorized, d equals g divided by v, how would you memor uh, rearrange that to get the g by itself? What would the answer look like? turns out it would look like that, g equals v times d, which I like to flip around. doesn't really matter which is on the left and which is on the right, but the thing that I'm trying to solve for, I like to keep on the left. So a problem that you might use that for would be something like this. See what you can do with that, and you can check your answer.